Today, we are gonna talk with Tommy Mallet and James Argent, two open, honest, great guys who are gonna hopefully give some great insight into their life and some great advice. So without further ado, welcome to the Getting There podcast with me, bro. Thank you, both of you, for coming. I know I drove you all mad. <laughs> now listen, everyone, before you think this is weird and this is like some free up or something, right? I'm here for support, right? Because I'm basically right. acting, I'm acting as Argy's agent because, because, <laughs> because his agent can't get it right now and Brogan <laughs> has got a really good way of getting stuff out of people, right? right? You can't yeah. say no to Brogan. You can't say no to Brogan. I've had Tommy on earlier. I wanted to have James on, so we've got Tommy holding your hand. <laughs> well, he is the podcast king. Yeah, I don't know that. So I thought I was getting an exclusive. Like, where I've not been on social media, I said, Shauna, who's my sister, he's, Tommy's so nice, he's going to come and speak. And she's like, he's doing them all the time. I was like, what do you mean? She was like, no, you only do top tiers. Yeah, to only be fair, tiers. you educated me, didn't you? Said it's the, isn't it the best? You didn't say podcast the, the best way the, of marketing. The, the best way of getting marketing at the minute because obviously Instagram's now a set of reels, isn't it? So if you can take snippets out of each podcast and you can use them for TikToks and reels, yeah, that's why. That's how you're getting it. Can you help me do this. Of course. Were you friends with Ard when he was the club promoter? So he used to do stuffing no, faces. No. He used to have my two friends in like bunny outfits. <laughs> No, but honestly, when did Tommy start? What year? 2010? It's before. The first time I ever met you was in New Bar. Yeah, and you and me were doing a press, press up competition. Up, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 I yeah, think yeah, you smashed yeah, me yeah, to yeah, pieces. Yeah, smash to piece, you yeah. was like a bit of a local celebrity, like even before you was on Tower, yeah, weren't I, you? I, that was 2000. And, when did Tower start? I don't know, it was before, way before Towie. Billy was on, no, no, it was before Towie. Sorry, it was before Towie. No, 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 it might have been actually, no, I'm no it might have been, I was you, before, met, way before you started Towie. I met you in Spain years before, years before, but I was just a lot younger. And My then bad. I met you in a new bar through Billy Mucklow. Yeah. And that was... And Alex Wright, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What's getting there to you? <laughs> huh? What's getting there to you? Where are you trying to get? Getting there? Yeah. Um... I just, I don't know, I think, like, do you know what it is, I've like, listened to some of the stuff you two were talking about, and I feel like when I was younger, a lot of my goals were actually look a lot different to what they are now. Yeah, of course. Like, Tommy, you've always been quite business and like and that orientated, but I remember when, when I first went on to Towie, I remember I was only like, I only thought I was going to be like Mark's friend, Mark's sidekick, I didn't expect to... Still are a little bit. No, but I, I, did, I never expected to be like, you know, a main character in my own right. So I was always like, I was just happy to, uh, you know, I, I went on Tower thinking, I wonder if I could, you know, really get some wedding gigs. Like, I, yeah. I always wanted to be a yeah, wedding yeah. singer. Like, even before Towie, I was singing in New Bar. Um, I, I was seeing local restaurants, like some in some bars in Marbella and stuff. I always just thought, if I get onto Towie, I'm only going to be Mark's like mate or sidekick, but you know, I might get some. Like, like, this could really kickstart me singing in more weddings. I might be able to save up and you know maybe get a mortgage or something like that. And it was only when Towie started, and I, you know, kind of, you know, I, I kind of, I went from just being someone who kind of like went shopping with Mark or discussing stuff to actually having my own. Identity. Kind of my own identity and stuff like like that, and then I remember I think that at the time my goals were just like it just it was so like consumed into like Talian fame yeah. that I feel like at, like at that age I was like in my twenties I felt that there was actually when I think about it now there was um, there was probably an equal balance or if not more so I was actually more attracted to like the attention and fame side of yeah. things that I was even necessarily about money. I, I obviously, like, you know, I went from earning absolutely nothing, you know, working in, working in Waitrose or working in doing like, um, I was like a child mind. Yeah. I was selling Christmas trees. I was a stockbroker. <laughs> I was, I was working as solicitors, a financial advisors. I was work, I, I was kids. working in a jewelers. No, I was just like, I was just doing anything I could just to earn like, you know what I mean? Like 50 quid here, here yeah, or there, yeah. do you know what I mean? And then it wasn't like, and Towie come along and everything kind of changed, but, and I just went on there thinking I'll get some wedding gigs yeah. out of it. But then 
as the show, you know, become like become a monster, didn't it? Mm. Um, and then I think I was equally or more so attracted to kind of like I did like the attention and the fame and everything like that. And then it was like all about you know, you was like I was kind of more driven about getting more airtime or more scenes or doing more TV work or or stuff off the back of tab. Blah, blah. But as times got on, as I've got older, and I think it's since I've got into my thirties, honestly, the fame side of things, I'm actually really. <laughs> No, but I used to be so, like, I used to be, oh, that used to be almost the biggest attraction was, you know, I want to like, get the biggest show outside of Tower, or I want to have the most airtime, or I want to have the final moment in every episode, or the big final moment in each series, and that was like, but it was never really, like, like but the money and business side of things wasn't really my goal, and I feel like as I've got into my 30s, yeah. I'm so, like, I, I've, I've realised now that obviously life is most importantly, obviously what I've been through is health, like happiness and health, isn't it? So now m my focus is now, like I've always, like, like before Tower, I wanted to be a wedding singer. And now I'm putting my heart and soul, my pride and my joy purely into wedding singing. And a lot of people say to me like, oh, you never post, you never do Instagram stories, you're hardly ever on social media. The only thing I ever see you do is put up clips from your gigs or, or you okay, singing or... <laughs> or the odd, or the, odd, the very odd, the, odd toothpaste. the very yeah, odd pay for yeah, and yeah. But I just feel like, yeah, like I just feel like I don't know whether it's with age or maturity, but now kind of, I'm definitely more motivated. Like more, like like if someone said to me, I'll you know, like, like I'm more kind of motivated in terms of like like my business and like creating the brand for the band and the band and like earning money now as opposed to chasing fame like I'm done I'm really don't get me wrong I feel like for me it's always I, I, I need to kind of dip in and out of television to kind of maintain profile. A, a profile where I can you know still warrant well, getting lots of gigs and stuff off but now I'm getting in a position now where the band's being booked not just because oh yeah we'll get Arj from Tower he'll come and yeah. sing us a few songs for a laugh the the band's been booked because the band's the nuts. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because the, it's a brilliant band. Arj, I remember that happening because Arj was like, Arj, he was so insecure, yeah, about TV because he was like, he's mad talented. You know, you say reality TV stars have got no talent, yeah? I don't believe that. People say it. This geezer was made to be on reality TV. You've never seen anything like it. Like, some of it, some, one. No, we shot something with James just to. I want to go back to your tail stuff in a minute, but we saw something with James and he was doing something for the charity, right? And he was going to swim. And I used to, he was really, it was just before his operation and I would, I would speak to him and you could see the pain he was in, right? He struggled to do up his shoes, all of this kind of stuff. We sat him in that chair, all of a sudden, the lights went on, the teeth went on, it. and he it went, so true. and he went, hello, I'm James R. George. And I remember Nate, who's in the room with me now, and I was like, what just happened? Yeah. Like he's an actor, right? And but away from all of that, and like you were saying, you're not on social media a lot. So all we see is this happy person, but it's like it's almost become like an identity for it's, you it's, and a caricature of what you've lived up to. It's so true what you said, Tom. You can relate because you you've been there, you've seen it. There's times where like I'll like sit there like all quiet, Man. or like or like people are, like talking to me. And I'm like, I'm just completely like in my own planet, just like zoning out. That was only like, off, last year, you know. Yeah, you doing that. yeah. That like, was completely like, like zoning out or like in another planet. And like people sometimes will talk to me, and it'll go through like one ear, and out the other, I'll just be sitting there like in my own world, blah blah. And then as soon as the cameras start rolling, action. You go, huh? Yeah. Anyway, boom. And then if if he feels like he's forgetting what he's saying or saying, he'll do the mad thing like he'll do a fart or something, and the whole thing. <laughs> Like, he just, it, he's so, like, from the start, yeah, yeah, he, he's trained, made right? to do it. He's made to do it. I want to talk to you about that. So, how did you end up going in Towie? Like, what was the first phone call? What did you know you were signing up for back then? Um, I first went to Towie. I was living in Spain. Um, well, no, so basically I was going from job to job to job to job, like I said before. One minute I was selling Christmas trees and I was babysitting, then I was in Waitrose. <laughs> the babysitting is so rude. <laughs> so rude. <laughs> <laughs> then I was in. Then I, then I was in. Where was I? I was Wait, can you just? How did you babysit anyone? I just want to know that. <laughs> I used to be a, like a babysitter. My mum's a childminder. You couldn't have been a babysitter. It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like as a friend, I babysit you. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> you 
can imagine like getting the boys to fight each other. Well, I could imagine you'd be no, but you'd forget they was there, man. Like, so I used to just raid the fridge so, in the cupboards. I they'd actually, come back and there'd be no I food. I wouldn't even leave my dog with him. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, I wouldn't lie. In the last few years, I'd probably just about leave my dog with you. But yeah, but I was never like monkey. Oh, Monkey, that's come on. That's Tommy's dog. You know, we Sorry, are in game. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I always think of Monkey as George's dog. Alright. Weird. Yeah, so I was, one minute I was babysitting, then I was selling Christmas trees, then I was working in Waitrose, then, uh, you know, I've got sacked from all of these jobs, by the way. And then I was fin at, working at financial advisors, um, a solicitors, a stockbrokers, then I was working at my mate's uh, jewellers. Bro, um, you all got the worst, you had the worst <laughs> finance. You, if I give you hundred pounds, <laughs> it, it, it'd be gone within two minutes. How the fuck yeah. could you advise anyone on finance? <laughs> <laughs> That's the maddest thing. Yeah. I, but what, what? I don't know. Where, you, this is the Sims or something, brother. Because no, there's no way this happened. No, but I wasn't actually a financial advisor. I was working at the financial advisor. <laughs> I, I, was, I was just like <laughs> expected to do filing or make teas or something. I don't know what I was doing. My dad was just trying to help me for his mates get a job. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So who called you? Who told you about this show? So basically, I, I, I decided, and then, and then, actually, I I sung at a local restaurant in Woodford Green, Ross. No, I decided that I used to, I, I love singing. Like I'd always be the one to get up, and all my mates would get me to sing, and I'd always be one to get up and sing songs. I used to do a lot of musical theatre when I was young, so I loved singing, and I kind of always had a bit of a, a passion for like like Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. I love oh, like no, I love like the Italian yeah. mafia, Italian uh, American kind of feel with like the good fellas the movies things like that. so i fancied being a bit of a crooner um and i you know i started singing i think it was a, a restaurant a local restaurant wood for green rossos um and i was there and it only sat like 50 people and i remember all my friends and family come and the restaurant was packed out and they wanted me back and then i spoke to adam brooks who had the new bar uh, a good friend of me and tommy's obviously and he um he had this he had this great idea that he, he would basically the bar would be absolutely rampacked from like, I don't know, 10, 10 30 to 1, 2 a.m. But obviously he could open from like 7 a.m. So what he thought was right, I put Arge to sing. 7 p.m. Yeah, 7 p.m. I put Arge to sing at like 7, 8 p.m. And then, you, and then yeah, all of his mates and family, yeah. they'll come early doors to watch me sing and then kick start the drinking at the bar. Yeah, and yeah. that's what, what happened and it really kicked off. And then, um, and then I remember, I remember thinking, right, I was going from job, 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 job. What I want to do is I'll, I'm still young, you know, I was like 21 at the time. I was like, I could do a summer in, do a summer in my bar, but I'll, instead of like working bar and the bars or, or restaurants, I'll go and do a bit of singing in some of the restaurants or the, you know, and I, and I actually did a bit of singing out there. It was quite cool. And then I remember Mark used to come visit me, Mark Wright, and then he told me about how there was these uh, TV producers that had met him um, and that, you know, they really wanted to kind of create a kind of reality style soap but based in Essex, and they remember that there was a show uh, the Hills. called The Hills, yes, yeah. in America, where they would film, it was kind of like a soap opera, but a real life one, and they would film, um, you know, real people's lives and certain friendship groups and, and families and relationships. And they loved Mark, of course, because Mark, you know, he had this on and off girlfriend, Laura, and he had this family that were, you know, brothers and sisters, and, uh, you know, he was also, obviously had a few other girlfriends and all this, and he was a character, but, so they loved Mark and his family, and then they cast other people, like Ed Kirk, obviously his dad owned the Sugar Up Mick, um, God bless him, and then, you know, there was, there was other people like, like, that were cast, but they were looking for Mark to have a friend, they wanted, they had everything in place, but they didn't have Mark's best mate, Mark Sidekick, to have a chat with about the girls or about his girlfriend or to go shopping with or have to kick about with. And they didn't have that. And then I was in Spain um, and I ended up coming back home from Spain early because I had a row with my ex-girlfriend. Um, and then basically, Mark was like, oh, oh, he's one of my best mates. He's just back from Spain and they met me and then within... You'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> was you actually best mates with him though? Yeah. You was, yeah? Yeah, me, Mark. Well, yeah, we're really close. Me, Mark. Uh, Jack Tweed, Josh yeah. Wright. Um, so, yeah, so you've come back from Spain. So Mark rings you up and says, "Look, I'm going to film this show, but I want you to come on it." What is your? No, no, he didn't say one of his. He was telling me about it, and I was really pleased for Mark. I was excited. I was like, "Oh, my mate's going to yeah. be on TV. Like, I'm going to watch my mate on a show." Like, at that point, I didn't think I was going to be on it. So I was actually in Spain in my apartment. And I would, Mark was like, look out for the adverts. There's adverts about it on ITV too. 
So I've tuned into ITV2 and there's adverts of Mark and it's saying like, coming soon, the only way is Essex. But at this point, I'm living in Spain. I haven't even met a producer or anything. Gatsby was on the advert, wasn't Gatsby he? Was on Gatsby the advert. was on, supposed to be on it, yeah. There's a few people on, yeah, there was a few people on the advert. And then, and then yeah, I, uh, I came home from Spain, met the producers. Then they shot something with me and Mark just going down the David Lloyd to give her a chick. Well, as you know, <laughs> oh, I've done. I've never been in the gym in my life before that. Um, and then they've got him down the line. And then they've got still him down the line. Still ain't been. <laughs> <laughs> still ain't been. He just gets the band. Yeah, and, 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 and then that was that. Within a month, we filmed the first episode. And then, um, and then yeah, I, I'll never forget. I want to bring it back. Go on. First episode. Yeah. You get in the car, there's a camera crew. Are you thinking, what are you thinking? What have I done? This is fun. I, I, I didn't really know what was going on. I mean, I didn't quite understand the whole concept of the show. I didn't really know what my part was. And um, I remember being a bit, I was actually quite, I was always quite popular. Like I did like nightclub promoting when I was younger and stuff. I used to work on the doors at some of like Mark's, <laughs> Mark, Mark used to throw nightclub events and I would, he'd, yeah. like, he'd hire me to be like the, used to be a woman. I used to go to that. It used to be a woman that used to be a, have a clipboard and say, no, you're not coming yeah. in, you're coming in or show people their tables. But Mark used to be paying me. <laughs> and any time, it's a funny, any time the night wouldn't make any money, Blame you. I wouldn't get paid. <laughs> I, would, I was Mark, I swear to you, I'd be on the door, freezing my nuts off outside of the club in London, and if not enough people didn't turn up and no one made any dough, I wouldn't get paid. <laughs> I remember so, going to the event, yeah. you know, Face CC Club, that was a big one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, I had my own, like, I had a, with my friends, we did actually have a really popular, um, it was my house music, but like a promotional uh, night, and we did nights at like Passion London, Faces Essex, yeah. CC Club London. So, so what was it like that time when you went in and you filmed, what were you thinking? You just didn't know what I, you I remember being quite, even though I was like quite a popular kid, like I knew, like I knew everyone, I was quite sociable, but I was still, I wasn't very, like, you know, like Tommy, Tommy was always very loud, very confident, like, you like, don't care. No, he's very, no, like, he had the confidence, yeah. like before, like you always had that confidence, didn't you? Yeah. Um, whereas me, like even when I was on stage, I would love to sing and perform, but I would still be nervous and I'd have all my sheets of music in front of me and I wouldn't quite, and it took me a while. And I remember when Towie started, I always felt that I was just quite, just a bit more like, like everyone, I felt other people maybe took to the film in a bit more naturally stuff. But I quite I felt that I was a bit more shy and wooden, but it didn't necessarily come across that way on TV. And then all of a sudden, yeah, it was just, it was just crazy. What, if you could talk to that boy that day that filmed, what would you say to him? Because you had no idea what you were walking into. I don't know what I'd say. <laughs> I would say, don't follow my, don't follow my path. Well, I, said, I, said, I said, get on with it and just enjoy it, but with him, it's different. Yeah. I'd say, if I... If I've I, had lots of ups and downs. Don't, don't cry. Remember when you cried to Mark when he was leaving? <laughs> <laughs> on the set, do you remember? I never once cried about any of my ex-girlfriends or getting dancing for the episode, <laughs> but I cried when Mark left the show. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you know we watched yeah. that back like three or four times a year, that one scene, yeah, when I go around these, he'll just put that on and it'll be it's him sitting on the city. It's two of them. One when Mark was rapping and he was going, Yeah, that's banging, he's got the hat on backwards, and the other one is when Mark was leaving and he sat there and he was crying. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh god. No, it was... was it scripted? No, it wasn't scripted. Anyway? No. Like... no. No, no, no. You'd have like topics to discuss, but that was based off the feedback we'd give the mm. show and obviously there would be set up cameras in certain situations but even like in terms of where you were filming it would be locations we were really going to or we'd tell them oh, we've been playing tennis this week and they'd film us playing tennis but having a chat so they kept it as like real as, you, as it possibly could and not just that they'd give you a topic to discuss but they wouldn't say you have to say have to say that you were responsible for everything you had to say but of course there was times yeah. where there was like, like like Tommy touched on before there was competitiveness and jealousy and there was like rows and drama do you remember when you stormed off and they said they sent Mason to get you there what happened we need our music Tommy's seen Tommy's seen lots of my uh... were you a diva James was I a diva oh yeah the worst only only, only... I got special treatment because I was vulnerable he had the show on <laughs> <laughs> Hey, he, 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 he had the show on lock. You know, like, for example, the exec producers, everyone was mad scared of him. You weren't allowed to talk to him on the phone, blah, blah, blah. I had him on speed dial. And he's like, I ain't having it. <laughs> da, da, da. And it was because it was Arj. You just got away with it. Yeah. Arj, Arj was Towie, though. 
Yeah. Proper. He is. Yeah, proper. Yeah, yeah. Like when you think about it, you think of odd. Oh, nah. Do you feel like you had to pay up to like caricature? This is for both of you, really. Did you both feel like you had to pay up to caricature of yourself on stage? Nah, because because it was. Do you know the mad thing is? Yeah, because we was all friends. If 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 I'd start doing something which was muggy, he'd just look at me and he'd be like, "Mate, what the fuck are you talking about? You Why are you acting like that?" Do you remember we'd pull each other up about things all the time. Yeah. You know, when you look back at it now, do you think that? Do you think like even in the early days, you reckon the audience got to see the real? Like you kind of thing. Nah, no chance. I think on then, obviously, I think the way I spoke didn't make it much easier. Because we were just trying to understand what you were yeah, saying. I don't think they knew any of us was odd. No. Do you know what I mean? So I don't true. think, yeah, because I've been your friends, right, behind closed doors. A lot of people did used to say, though, to me that the thing about me was is that I was exactly the same. No, you are exactly the <laughs> yeah, same, but you still know there's so much more about you that people never knew, yeah. though, because think about it, we'd film a scene for an hour so and you'd see two minutes it. of it. Yeah. If that... And to be cleverly edited as well. Yeah, or you were scared to say something because you'd get called a grass and things like that. Do you remember how bad it got to the end? No, it's just like certain things you wouldn't, like, I don't know, it's, it's weird. Sometimes you couldn't be yourself because you'd put someone in it and like, it was certain, I th- it was I just... Think, I think it actually, it started off to be more authentic than anything because you would just film and then you would just be you and completely go for it. And then it was only when Twitter kind of blew up and when you started seeing loads of like if I, I was lucky i didn't really get it but there were certain people that were getting terrible terrible oh. tweets and a lot of hate and stuff and then that would maybe make them that would maybe make them more aware and less realistic when they were filming yeah. because in the back of their mind thinking oh do i say this or do i do that am i gonna yeah. get a lot of backlash am i getting tweets? yeah and it people, was heavy. And people stop being as authentic do you know when that was i'm not going to say the name but someone come on the show yeah who had a following from another show and it was the first time that they had done it, yeah? And we was all so young and we, we all, like, there was arguments and things like that, but the following that followed Tawi, who followed us, was half all right, but then a following from another show coming, right? And they was vile. So it was like X on the beach following. And there was a few rows on the show, but these followers that come with one of the cast members was fucking so abusive and from that day onwards, a lot of the cast members said, I ain't even, there's no point in me doing it because if we have a row and I call someone, tell someone to fuck off, normally you don't really get much stick for it. But now this new amount of followers have come onto Twitter, it was like, it was vile, it was so bad. So everyone got abused really bad over a certain thing and everyone just stopped bringing stuff to camera because of that. And I, f- I feel like the, the early, do you know, in the early days, even if you didn't come across the way you wanted to or you'd lost an argument and blah, blah, it didn't really matter as much because you'd still you'd still carry on doing what you're doing because everyone was like and even mm. when you know like like the other days of me and it, even like when Tommy first come on for the f- first few, like those flow series, people were getting so much off the back of the show and so many opportunities that you didn't, you didn't really care as yeah. much because you you were you were getting so much from the show and the opportunities. Whereas now, I think the reason you know what I mean why the show might yeah. struggle now is it's because. They're not going to completely give all of everything, themselves yeah. like they used to because there used to be so much more reward. Whereas, why am I going to truly be myself, come across badly, not worry about backlash when I'm not getting as much from yeah. it? Do you know what I mean? And, and people was favoured as well. Like, if someone got favoured, that's what happened. They yeah. get favoured in the press as well, would you say? None. Yeah, uh, yeah. like, he, he oh, could, he, yeah, he was, he could never do anything wrong. If, if, see, no, if, oh, just, no, 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 <laughs> what I mean is, what I mean is, say for example, if you had a row with someone, which you never had a lot of, right? Yeah. It, it would be like, oh, that's, it's, it's Arge. And Arge is like that nice, like, Yeah, like so you person. were automatically in the role. But say for example, if this was me, where the way I spoke and I was quite rowdy, it was a straight away, you're a bully. But that's straight like straight away. away. If you, I'd you, have an argument with someone, go, Brogan, what did you say? But it's like, you've not even heard the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And me and Tommy both had that, whereas everyone's like, what could Arge say? But really, yeah. and, 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 and it would have been very difficult for Tommy or other people, because when you come onto a show, that's already been on for a few mm. years and then people have become really loved or popular or established. When someone new comes on, and even if they're in the right, but they're kind of checking or they're having an argument or debate with someone who's already got mm. a bit of a fan base or popular, blah, blah. It's cu- it can be quite, yeah. it's it can be quite difficult. <laughs> it's it's on on your bad. <laughs> so when you guys started, there was none of this mental health stuff, right? So like now when people go into Love Island, you've got to go through like, Psychotherapy. Yeah, no, we had to do that. No, we had to do that. Yeah, ITV, ITV have always been on that. Yeah. But, like, 
obviously, when we, when we started doing it, I, I ain't going to talk for James, but all we wanted to do was just get into the series. So it was like, we need to just get there and try and get the money. So if they're sitting there and they're like, how's everything at home, blah, 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 and you're like, yeah, whatever, sweet. But now, obviously, if they probably psyched us now, we'd be a little bit different because of like stuff we've been through. But back then it was like, we flew through all the psych stuff. Yeah, I had to be, I had to speak to the psych like regularly. Come on, mate, <laughs> fucking do stop ringing it. Remember, I had to speak remember. to the psych regularly, yeah. Gareth, Claire, um, I built up a good relationship with them actually. And it, mm. does, re it does help along the way. But no, listen. Have your friendship circles changed much then from that day? Because I feel like where you are so nice, and I can probably say this is your friend as well, and so nice to everyone, you end up getting loads of hangers on as well. Like loads of people want to be your friend. Do you know what I mean? Because you are so nice. You end up with like, I feel like you've got loads of different groups of mates. I have got lots of different groups of mates, but I've also got lots of different like, hobbies and interests. Yeah. So like, and Tommy can relate as well, because Tommy's got different, like you've got different things that you're passionate yeah. about, haven't you? And different places where you've come from and different areas. But so like, for example, I have my friends from like music and the bands, like I've got all like my singing friends, my music friends, I've got all my boxing friends, yeah. I've got all my like, um, you know, my Tower friends, I've got still got my schoolmates, I've got the boys I used to go out with in Essex, in West Essex, near where I live after school. So I do have lots of friends and different friendship groups, but not necessarily, I wouldn't say hang on something, I say it's just because I've had different hobbies and interests. Like Tommy, you must have made lots of friends even through like trainers. Yeah, not as many as you though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you'd be surprised. You've yeah. probably got friends who are isn't you see the thing with Arge is you'd think like he has got they ain't hanging his honours. What it is with Arge is he loves the company. Yeah. Arge loves company, so like yeah. you're either an I introvert see. or an Yeah, extrovert. he'll chill with anyone. He'll chill yeah. with anyone. Like it's just yeah. he just likes having people around him, innit? So I could chill with anyone. Some of the people that I'm friends with oh, mate. they couldn't be more opposite. I have to say to him, do you remember before you'd invite me around and go, right, who's gonna be there? And we used to argue all the time because I'd turn up to your ass and then we'd be sitting down and someone'd come in. I'd go, mate, what the fuck you invited them for? Yeah. Do you remember yeah, all the time? I actually remember once you were messaging me, I was like, what are you doing? You sent me a picture and you were in Tommy's cinema and you were like, I don't even know why I'm here because some random dude from like Mountains. Mad. Just, the pizza boy was just coming the gym. No, but I am mad. Like one day I could literally be with like, like, like band geeky, like, like, like people, like rock kids, like goths and rockers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I could be with like, like hood, yeah. hood mates from, from like boxing, like Hackney, or I could be about the West Essex boys, like or like or Towie, like, that's like, that's like that's the, time, like, the <laughs> camouflage. Yeah. yeah. Do you that's remember that's the first piece of press that was written about you? Um, yes, I do actually. It was just I remember literally the first episode had gone out, and I remember walking down the street and I'm thinking, oh, this is mad because I knew that everyone, everyone in Essex, or everyone where we live, would be watching it because they'd seen the adverts in the press and everyone. Essex, our part of Essex, West Essex, quite a small, everyone kind of knows each other. So I knew everyone would be tuning in to watch it, but I didn't quite realise the, the fact that people in Ireland would be tuning in to watch it, people in Scotland, people in Manchester, Liverpool, like Midlands, like I didn't realise that the whole of Britain would be watching it. And that was which was, I was more worried about the opinions, how I come across yeah. some local donut who I see down the new bar or mm. Chigwell or something, because it was quite a judgy, it mm. could be quite, everyone was yeah. quite, it was quite a judge, like everyone, like, especially where we are part of Essex, it was kind of like people, like, it was, people kind of judged and spoke about each other a lot, didn't they, yeah. at that time when we were younger. And I remember, I was more worried about that, but then when Towie come out, I was getting, like, then it was almost like, it was like, I'm getting, like, opinions and I'm getting, like, like, like not, no, I didn't get to, I got a bantered, yeah. like, I always got bantered, like, my, my, my teeth were mad. Your teeth was bust <laughs> up, teeth bro. Was my mad. teeth were terrible. When mad. I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your teeth? Yeah. I remember, <laughs> nothing. No, no, they're natural, you're mad. Did you have braces in your No, young? nothing. I remember, I remember, like, I had, like, I remember, like, going on Towie, I'd mashed up teeth. Um, I, I was, I, I don't know, I just, I, I obviously I wasn't like in the gym like the other boys. I remember I used to get, I never really got hate or, or but I used to get heavily bantered, yeah. But then within about three months, weren't they putting you on helicopters or planes to the next appearances? Yeah. You just going from one to the other on helicopters. How mad is that? Yeah, I remember I did a PA once. <laughs> and I've got him here. It's only dough. <laughs> I remember, no, but this is like 13 years ago. Yeah, that's true. I remember, Tommy's right. I remember like a month or two went by and it was like, I went from, you know what I mean, like, like, like nicking a fifty quid here and there wherever I could, just like, like from different places. To all of a sudden, 
you know, who was getting paid a lot of money. Just you get five grand an hour, innit? No, I wasn't getting that much. But that's what people was getting, though, innit, at one point? Uh, no, I, I think, I think, like, no, I think people got, I think people who went and done, like, the jungle and stuff like yeah, that, yeah. the back of that, you got that. Would you do the jungle? One day. Yeah, would you I'm like ready. to if someone offered it? Um, yeah, I feel like, I, for, before it, like before, it would have been a bit of a disaster. Um, but now that I'm in a position now where I'm, I can, can yeah, like I can do them sort of shows. Well, yeah. You've just done the best one you can get. You're not allowed to say that, are you? Yeah, I can yeah. say the one that you've just done. Uh, it, I, it doesn't matter, does it? Huh? I've done. I'm, I'm done. What are you talking about? The yeah, it's the the best one. That's the I've one done, I'd I'm, love I'm, to do. I'm it. doing SAS Who Dares Wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I, feel, I, I feel, I feel, I filmed SAS. Who's is that better than the jungle then? Yeah, yeah man, it's what. heavy duty, yeah. isn't it? It's sick. Would you do the jungle? No. Would you do when, SAS? When, but when you say better, there's shows for different people. So, oh, okay. so when you say better, what is better? Is it better for you? Yeah. Better for your career? Well, what's for, more? So I need, I need in no fucking like. Bear, bears bollocks just to get on another TV show because I don't want to do that. But, but you might sell some more training. No, I won't. It's impossible. But when <laughs> when 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 I was when I was not knowing what to do, the the main goal for anyone in reality was to get on the jungle exactly. because yeah. anyone who'd done it, like for example, Mark, Joey, that was um, their off. Um, and that as soon as they'd done the show, they just went into a complete different bracket. In terms yeah, of completely. In terms of showbiz and being a reality TV star, it kind of did feel like Tommy just said. The, the ultimate goal, the ultimate opportunity would be to do I'm a celebrity. Yeah, that was it. Jungle. But now there's loads of stuff. But no, 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 and, and it probably still is. But whereas now, like if someone says to me, you still probably laugh, but if someone says to me, like, who doesn't really know me that well, my story or from another country or blah, blah, um, oh, what do you do? What's your career? Like, the first thing I'd say singer. is, I'd say I'm a wedding singer. Mm. Yeah. Like, I'd say I'm a wedding it's singer. Well. So, like, for me, even though, like, in terms of showbiz world or being a reality TV star, the jungle would be the ultimate opportunity and you get so much off the back of it and profile, blah, blah, blah. But for me, it's like my pride and joy and what I'm passionate about is wedding singing. Probably show, like, to me, the ultimate goal for someone like me who's a performer entertainer would be to do a Strictly or a yeah. Dancing on Ice or something like that. Do you know what I mean? I want to bring it back, Tom. We spoke about Brody earlier. Would you let him do reality TV? You won't need to, will he? Oh, I don't think He's already on it, isn't it? He's been on there since birth. So we've got our own show, haven't we? Me and Georgia. And Brody's on it. He's like Brody's mad comfortable around it. It's part of our life. Um, I'd let him be. I'd, I'd, he can be whatever he wants to be. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with me. Like, I've, as long as he's happy, I'd, he can do whatever he wants. But what I would say is, is it'd be better if he was on the reality show, which is about us as a family, in, instead of him going to Love Island. I wouldn't let him go on Love Island. I'm not going to lie to you. Mm. No chance. Island. No. Why? That's a good, that's a good because point. Because I know how competitive it is, and I know how, for, for example, I was touching back on what we said earlier when I said, I always use the name Ma Mallet because if anything went wrong, I could go back to my old life. The moment you step on that show, you're recognised, and it's very hard to go back. So, for example, I could have done one episode on Towie and whatever viewing it was getting, and... And if everything failed, I'd have had to go back to work and try and fit in a normal working environment after that. That was always a worry for me. So Love Island for me is there's way too many cast members on there for someone to really hit off nowadays. So and it's for, not a recurring series where you come yeah. back and do the next series. We was well. on telly all year. Like literally when, Wednesdays and Sundays, yeah, for like four months. And then we'd have three months filming and another four months. And then we'd have a Christmas special. So we was literally in people's faces constantly. So you had time to fix things that you fucked up. But if you go on that like a reality show, you got, got a window, and you so can't true. put it right. If you can't put it right, for example, that's why see, uh, Mark got away with everything on the show. Mark could do something on the show, he'd fuck up, and he'd go and do a scene with Nanny Pat, and everyone oh, would love him again. Yeah. But you can't do that on Love Island. If you go and do something, literally, you can ruin yourself by doing one wrong second. You can make one comment that can ruin edited. everything, or the way you're edited. And for me, I just feel like. From what we've been through off the back of it, yes, it's brought a lot of joy and it's been an unbelievable time of our lives. I would like Brody to try and have a sort of normal, I don't know what you think normal is, but I'd like him to try and go down a bit of a normal route and just have a normal life and just... You just you, I think you, you, you just got to wait and see what his passions and his hobbies are. Yeah. Like he might be really into something, he might not, he might even be I'll really I'll support into, him. Yeah, he might grow up and he might be into music or he might be into a sport or... Mm. He might be academic, or you just Hopefully. don't know. Like your kid comes home and wants to go on Love Island or a reality program. 
<laughs> what are you thinking? Well, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't well no, but you're going to have one. You're going to have kids. I hope so. Yeah. That's the plan. Yeah. That would be but, the plan. And, but what I'm that. saying is, like, what, how, how would you feel about that? Um, I, I think, like what Tommy said, it's dependent on what the... It would be dependent on what the show is. I mean, I, I wouldn't stop them from doing anything, yeah. but I would obviously advise... Bro, you've got to bear in mind, yeah? Look, we we done this all for profile's sake, for money, yeah? Well, some done it for fame, some done it for money, yeah? But along the lines of us doing it, we built profiles for ourselves. Look, made us... I wouldn't say I'm famous. I'd say he's famous, but... You are look, We've already built the platforms for our kids to get them out there, so Brody's never going to really have to... Get, like. I, I don't see the meaning of him wanting to do it. I think as well now. Do you know what I'm saying, Arj? You know, like, when you see... It, the only reason he would want to go on that show is because he'd want to be famous, innit? And it'd be like sending a little rich kid on, on to Love Island. It's, I just don't feel like that's what I want for him, man. I want him to go out and experience life. I feel like it's diluted now as well because that was one show at the beginning. Like, now we've got this, 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 and this. So it's like all these people going on. You wouldn't be able to name Love Island. I mean, I've never watched it, but this year you wouldn't be able to name it. Oh. Right, I want to... But they have smashed it, though. Them, some of them kids on there yeah. have smashed it oh. off the back of it. Like, literally, you got to take your out of the They went on... a platform to do what you really want to do. That's Who why they said some of the guys on the same as me. Like, some of the guys on the yeah. they'll ask me, like, oh, like, you know, we're on Tower and... You know, we ain't got a theme, you know what I mean? I'm like, I was like, so just, just try and use it to a stepping push stage or promote something, something yeah. that you really want to do. Like, if you want to be a PT, but uh, say to the producers, right, get me doing scenes where I'm personal training people, yeah. things like that, or like, or if you want to, don't know, just anything. That's what we was good at on the show. Arj always made it, yeah, <laughs> about him. <laughs> that, no, but no, in certain things. Say, for example, when I was like making clothing, yeah? Arj would make the scene about him, but he would do it in where I was making my clothing, so he would bring me in at the same time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And we was clever like that. We'd always make sure it was mentioned what was going on. Always and done it was that, didn't we? people got a lot more promo than other people. Yeah, always. And it was always and like that, the people weren't as good as us as well. That used to piss us off the most because the people that used to get favoured a lot of the time by the producers, they weren't even as good as what we was, but they was just, I don't know, man. But yeah, Love Island for Brody, no. Did you guys have any arguments on there? Me, me and him? Yeah. No. no, never. No, I don't, have we had an argument before? We've had like, yeah, we've had like... And we bicker constantly, though. This is the longest we've never bickered. But like, obviously, nah, because Argy's different as a person over the last year, I've got more respect for him, yeah? And I actually, no, but I'm different. I, I didn't have much respect for Arj for a few years because of the way that he carried himself, right? But Arj now has become something completely different. It's mad inspiring, yeah? No. So like, I used to talk to Arj and he used to look straight through me and I used to, I didn't like that about him. So I used to row with him, but nah, he rings me and asks me how I am, and he, we've got a joke because he never used to. Like, he never. <laughs> he used to ring me and just like ask for something or talk talk to me about something. And about I go, me. mate, about him. I go, mate, you ain't even fucking rung me and asked how my mum is. And he's used that forever now. He, we always say it as yeah, soon as he I rings me, as your mum. For years and years, I've always. Is that as your mum? But we used to bicker <laughs> all the time. But we don't bicker no more, do we? Never. Because I like who he is now. I feel like I've got mad respect for him and what he's done. I think when someone respects themselves more, yeah. you end up having more respect. I think well, it was pretty, as well, like the, obviously I'm, what I've been through put a lot of pain and hurt and it affects other people. Like with me, I'm, like, when, I, when I was going through what I was going through, I was kind of more like, I was doing it to myself, but I was kind of like in a blur and I was in my own world. It's but you really don't cool. realise that the effects, like, that's why Tommy, and there was times where Tommy and Georgia, even when I, sort myself out, they'd be really happy for me, but they also didn't want to get too close because I'd, I'd like kind of relapsed so many times where it would just be, even George said to me once, it would just be, it just gets more you just heart get pissed off. You, you get, get pissed heart, off. It's heartbreaking. We'd sit it? there with his mum, like, uh, being, I'll never forget the amount of time I've sat down in his house with his mum, eating whatever she makes them pickle sandwiches or something, <laughs> or, or, or cucumber sandwiches or something. And her dad, right, and, and his dad, and just been like, whoa. And, like, and, and for me, I, was, I couldn't get my head around for years. How it just kept on coming back, and he'd, like, he'd, he'd be sweet, and then he'd be bad again. And uh, for me, I lost respect for him, yeah, because I was thought, how are you doing this to everyone and yourself? But I didn't realise enough about it. I didn't realise how bad, look, look, how, how much he's actually been through. Like, no, no one knows how much Arj has been through. I think it looks easy, but he's, he's been through, so, like, so much. And because he's, like, funny and he's always the life and soul of the party and things like that, you never see when the party stopped, man. I see it. And I, I see how tough it was for him. And I, I resented him a lot because 
I thought that we would we'd sort of make it our problem, Arge. Arge was sort of, we made Arge our own problem, yeah? So we'd be like, oh, but we're helping you, and then we're doing this, and then you just fucking do this, mm. and then we'd use it against him, and I didn't know enough about it. But then now, nah, even though I don't see him every day, like I used to, when I speak to him, I'm like, I can't believe how different he is as a person. He asked me about me, he asked me how my family is, which we laugh about, but he also tells me powerful stuff about himself, like, when he, ex he accepted that he didn't want to do this TV thing, he was still going to do it, but it wasn't his main focus and he found his ambition was this wedding singing. That was when his life changed. So that's why we don't run no more, because I, I, I respect him now. Do you think part of your trauma and the, and the drugs and everything came from being in television and not being prepared for that? Mm. Or do you think that's still... No, happened? because I always had like... No, I, everyone says this because if I was... <clears throat> you know, there's thousands of... Of people that have like come and gone from like Tower, Main Chelsea, Love Islands, and things like that, and you know, not many of them have been to like, rehab and in and out of rehab and stuff like that. So I can't just say it was the fame or the TV because otherwise, why wouldn't it have happened to hundreds of others? But I feel like I, I always, I mean, don't get me wrong, it probably heightened things for me at times, and it probably certain situations didn't help. And and I think that um, I always had, pro I think I probably had problems before Tau, because I always had like weight issues that like, I going up and down in weight and things like that and maybe like body confidence and image confidence and maybe obviously being on TV and social media and looking back at myself in uh, pictures what? when you're packed or on television or comments on Instagram, obviously that takes its toll and stuff and going through breakups on TV what? and being in like Yours was that. more when the series used to end and we used to have, remember you used to have that, remember you used to have that time, yeah. remember you used to have that time and it was, was we used to just all of a sudden it would just stop wouldn't it and it was like we had a Because while you're filming he's chasing the getting there, I've got to do this, I've yeah. got to do that and then what happens is and a lot of the work that I've done as well I've come to realise is that we're all numbing out whether it's food, whether it's drugs, whether it's exercise, like I stood at that, up at that retreat and I was like oh I don't do any of that really, I mean I, I'm addicted to exercise but I'm addicted to chaos and drama and things moving. And it's like, James was probably chasing the, whatever was going on in filming. And then when we're quiet and we're made to sit with ourselves, and that's when I find things happen to me as well. Or I've had people chasing stuff. And then when it all goes quiet, you sit with yourself. And that's when I think it all gets fine. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely learned a lot of lessons. And, and like now, I'm, I'm a lot more selective of what I do. Like, whereas before, I just wanted to be on TV as much as possible, and yes, this, yes, that, do everything I could, and push for things, but now I'm like, uh, I'm more selective with what I do. Like, if there's, like, TV shows, for example, where, like, there could be drama, or arguments, or, um, or you know what I mean, stuff bad like energy. that, bad energy, like, I'm, I, don't, I don't consider it. If there's shows where, you know, like, for example, me learning a new skill, or doing a challenge, or, or things like that, then... I'm well up for it. Like, yeah. like and if it's fun, if it's positive and, and good people, then like, I'm, I'm in a position. Maybe it's like obviously because you know, I'm focusing more on the wedding thing stuff like that. But now I'm in a position where I don't. There's certain things I you wouldn't can choose, do. right? Yeah. Whereas before it would be like if you get an opportunity in a big show on a prime time channel or a prime time slot, you take it. But well, as your friend, I just think it's amazing everything you've done. Like, and I've watched so many stages of it, and I'm so proud of you. Thank you for coming today.